Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Detail Rag. We're at episode 55 with Victor Bursiaga from Detail Boys. Victor did our uh, episode 44. Um, Victor, welcome back. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Paul, how you been, brother? Hi, Brian. Victor, what's up? I'm doing great. <laughs> Always good to see you guys have Victor back on. Victor's a cool dude, man. Heck yeah. Um, first of all, I do want to mention the fact that um, I need Victor to talk about that humongous bottle of beadlock in the background. I uh, like it. You know, it's got air in it. He could pop it. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually so it's funny because that's actually where we store our, our water. We sell a uh, uh, spot free water here for oh, that's your water tank, dude. That's sick. Yeah, it was just it was an ugly color. So the whole thing was blue, like a like a royal blue. And it just stood out, you know, and <laughs> that is I awesome. I can't put it in the room. I can't put it anywhere. I can't put it upstairs because it's too heavy. Yeah. I was like, uh, let's wrap it, you know? Now the question was, what do we want to wrap it in, you know? And I was like, oh, I want to do something that nobody has, something different, you know? And I was like, the hell with it. Let's, let's do a ceramic coating bottle, you know? And I, I called my rap guy, uh, Marco, the retrospect, and I told him, like, hey, dude, I want to make this look like a ceramic coating bottle. Like, I'm talking about from the, from the words in the back of the bottle, um, everything identical. And he's like, yeah, dude, let's do it. So like three months later, he came with the design and there it is. Dude, that's so cool, man. Yeah. The other reason I wanted to do it too, though, is because like when, um, when clients walk into the shop, that's one of the first thing that, that they see. And they question like, hey, what's in there? What is that? So we explained to them, oh, it's just a, a water tank, you know, but this is the ceramic coating that we offer. And that's when the question starts. Like, hey, well, what is, what's a ceramic coating? And we get to, you know, educate them on, on the benefits of a coating. And most of the time, they end up getting a coating, you know? If it, that is if awesome. It makes sense for them. Can uh, I steal but, your idea, Victor? What's that? Can I steal that oh. idea? Yeah. I was just going to say, you know what's going to happen after this episode is Paul's going to have a big old Modesta bottle in his his shop. Well, uh, I, got, I got two 550-gallon yeah. tanks, dude. I could have two, man. That's, yeah. that's rad, dude. I love it. That is great. Dude, that is I awesome. I can do it for you. What's that? I can I can refer you to my guy, Retrospect. He, he's really good at it. Sounds good. That yeah. is awesome. I, I I just had to mention that because that is a, a phenomenal conversation piece and yeah. it makes your shop. I mean, you dude, you got seriously, you've got an amazing shop to begin with anyway. And then when I see stuff like that, I'm like, ah, dude. <laughs> it's I'm and you know what? I'm gonna stop calling you Victor. I'm gonna just start calling you Victory. <laughs> like, that's, that's funny <laughs> that sounds good that's awesome i'll take it yeah oh uh, well tonight um what we're going to talk about a little bit is we want to talk about um customer relations customer not necessarily customer management but uh ladies and gentlemen victor wants to talk about customer relations and customer satisfaction and building relationships and integrity in your business so, Victor, I'm just going to give it to you and you just kind of walk us through what you want to talk about. Yeah, I think I think, um, you know, when you start when you start a business, I think one of the first thoughts that goes through most people's head is uh, I want to I want to make money. Right. We all want to make right. money. Um, and then the first thing is, well, how do I start making money? And a lot of people, you know, they want to get the best equipment, the best chemicals, the best everything. And they, they think it's going to help them stand out from the competition, which I'm sure it does, you know, but we have to go back to setting the foundation, right, of our business. And without our customers, we don't have a business, right? Yeah. Correct. It all starts with our customers, our clients. Um, and I'm, I'm a big believer in, in building relationships with them because they're going to determine if we're successful or not, right? Um, so a lot of my customers, I'd say maybe 80% of my customers, you know, um, that they're returning customers. Um, they, they don't shop around for prices. They don't go to other companies and see what else they offer because they're happy here. Not just with their car detailing, but with the whole experience, you know, um, whether it's, we have a 10 minute conversation with them when they're, when we're done with their car, you know, about 
personal stuff, you know, about dogs, football, whatever it is. Yeah. They, a lot of them come because they want that experience. Right. right. Um, anyone can detail a car, make it look good. You know, that's just a part of it. And I it just goes back to, to building those relationships, you know, Paul, I'm sure, I mean, Paul can relate. Look at Paul. Paul's very successful. Uh, me and Paul have tons of conversations every time I go over there about the same thing, customers, you know, um, right. relationships, you know, um, but yeah. So I have so, a question for you, Victor. I yeah, mean, I know you're pretty good, but um, <clears throat> so I think it starts with myself and I know you think, you know, I know, you know, it starts with yourself. Yeah. So how do you become the best? representation of yourself so i walk in the door i bring you my car i feel like you care about me and my car you want to get to know me as a person what what do you do like what do you do in your private life do you read do you listen to podcasts because i know you're pretty good dude you're a great guy but that takes work you know so what what do you do what do you tell people like how, how do you learn about Dealing with yourself, customers, all that stuff. Um, I, I'll be honest. I don't read. I don't read as much as I should. I used to read a lot years back. Um, I haven't picked up a book in quite some time. Um, I think it's just it's just being, just being honest. I think you know, just being just being you. Um, customers will know if if you're not being real, you're not being honest, you're trying to be something you're not. You're feeding them a bunch of bull crap they 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 feed out they know you know yeah. um so just try to be yourself and not someone that you're not if that makes sense makes total uh, sense. and i like my wife like I have, I have an awesome wife i have awesome parents my kids are freaking amazing um i think that all feeds into it being surrounding yourself with the right type of people and energy um like i, I don't have a lot of friends um maybe 10 friends i don't know you know but to me a friend is is much more than that you know someone i can trust someone i look up to someone that that'll give me um feedback you know um and someone that that can help me grow you know yeah um, I, you know 15 years ago i had a whole different group of friends you know that you know i thought were cool and this and this i wanted to be like them and it's it, it didn't help me you know it didn't help me become a better person and I, I think that's the main thing, just surrounding yourself with the right group of people that that want to see you grow as well, you know? Yeah. So Absolutely. tell me another thing, because um, you're a really nice guy. You're humble. You got a really great family, I know. You got a really bitchin' shop. You got a great business. Yes. What keeps you humble when all these detailers are like, dude, you're the man or your Instagram, you know, all that kind of stuff. Cause you know, a lot of people can let all that kind of stuff get to their head. I try very hard to just always stay myself and stay humble. You know, I've, I've never really liked that, that like when, when detailers come in, like, Oh man, like, you know, I've been watching your videos for so long and it might sound weird, but I'm, I like it, you know, it feels good, but I don't like that type of attention. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I don't get me wrong. Like it's flattering, but I don't, that's not what I look for. It's not why I do it. Um, I'd rather, you know, have that person come in and, you know, I've had one, one guy a couple weeks ago, like, Oh, I want to be, I want to be just like where you're at. And I was like, it'd be better. You know? Yeah. Like I'm not where I, where I, where I want to be, you know, I want to grow. I want to get better. I want to do other stuff. Yeah. Like, dude, you, you can be way better, you know? And it's the truth, you know, like we all know my, my history. Um, you know, there's people that don't have that history, you know, that there's more open doors in certain situations. Um, like me, I wanted, I wanted to be a, a police officer. I, I can't do that, you know? Um, but I just, I don't know. I just, I just want to see other detailers and not just detailers, but other people grow. And even if they get, you know, bigger than me or whatever, like, that's cool. Like, that's what I want to see. Yeah. I can fall back <laughs> Oh, well, I know I helped a little bit, you know, like it, it just makes you feel good, you know? Yeah. And and I think that's one of the things that is really super cool about you and Paul and some of the other people I've met along the way is that you do have that knack for helping people grow. 
And that's, I think that's important too. There's, I, and, and I know we've already talked about your past, but your past, as far as I'm concerned, again, what Paul and I talk about all the time about our past has brought us to where we're at today. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, and so <clears throat> where you're at today is huge for, for other people that are watching and stopping by to talk to you. And, and, and I think that's, you got to, you got to keep in mind that where you're at right now, a lot of people want to be there and they're looking up to you. And that's, that's awesome. Yeah. We, we get a lot of DMS, you know, like from people, like they'll start off with like, Hey, you know, I just started my business. Um, um, and they'll go on, you know, and then we'll respond, you know, if, if I have time to respond, I'll respond, you know, and as long as it's not like a scam, you know, you know, there's a lot of scammers and stuff on the on Instagram. Right. But yeah. But you can tell it's real. Um, yeah. And it's like, they're so shocked, you know, that they got a response and they're like, wow, man, I've messaged 20 people and no one's responded to me. And it's like, man, that sucks. Like, um, yeah, like I get it. You know, like people, they, they, they want to you know <clears throat> come out more on top than other people, but like, dude, like helping someone that's 18 years old, for example, this guy was 18, like getting them started, whether it's 20, 30 minutes out of your day and DMing them back and forth, like that can change somebody's life. Yeah. Right. You know, um, so yeah, so I mean, that's what keeps me humble, I guess, you know, yeah, because you really don't know when, when somebody reaches out to you, you don't know again, we don't know who they are, yeah, but you don't really know their situation, you don't know what they're they're trying to achieve at the point, and yeah. and you uh responding or just giving them a little bit of time of time of the day is can be life changing to some people, yeah, it can so. It's like I always say, Brian, it's if, if every human did that, this would be a much different planet, especially the freeways out here. <laughs> right, Victor? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dude. Uh, I can't I was I was back there, you know, a, a hundred years ago and it was horrible. I can't imagine what it's like now. Yeah, I just gotta chill. <laughs> yeah. I have two whole blocks to get to work. You uh, do? Yeah. Oh, poor baby. But it, but it takes you 45 minutes? Yeah, sometimes probably. It takes me about like a minute and a half. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So what what's something that you think um, that you can share that is – so let's just say, for instance, you have a, a brand-new customer that comes to the front door. Mm -hmm. What's Victor's reaction? How do you – what could you share with someone – that might be a pivotal moment for them to think about what, what do they need to think about when they're approaching a new customer? First thing is you, you have to make them feel welcome, right? Um, you know, whether you're in a bad mood, you're having a bad day, customer doesn't need to know that, yeah. right? So they walk in, whether it's, you know, good morning, good afternoon. How can I help you? Um, let me know if you have any questions, whatever it is, right? You have to give that first impression has to make them feel welcome. Um, you know, we've had, we've had customers come in and they booked the job just because of them feeling that we made them feel special. You know, right. they went to another shop down the street, you know, and you know, they ignored them for the first three minutes. They didn't greet them. Um, but that goes a long way. Right. Yeah. So then when the customer comes in, instead of trying to sell them like the highest package you have, see what, what, what they're looking for. You know, they might just be looking for something basic, you know? Right. Um, like a one-step polish or something, you know, they might not know what swirl marks are. So get to know them. Um, obviously like their driving habits and everything, what they're looking for, what best fits them. Um, and they just go from there. And like I said, don't, don't, the way I see it, I tell my guys is don't focus on making $1,500 off of them on the first appointment, right? See right. what they need. If it's a $300 package, a $300 package. But if you make them feel well, no, sorry, not make them feel. If you let, if you make them understand that you're being one hundred percent honest with them, um, you're not screwing them over. That three hundred dollars is going to turn into thirty thousand dollars five years down the line, right? They're going right. to keep coming back to you. They're going to refer people to their family, friends, relatives, neighbors, at work, coworkers. One per, one that one detail can turn into something huge, right? right. And I think that's what keeps business is going their reputation um their customer service obviously you want to have a clean shop right um you do, do good work um 
but yeah, you just want to make him feel welcome. I think that's one thing that a lot of people, and I don't know maybe how you guys feel about this, but I think that's one thing that people kind of miss in the mm-hmm. detailing world is that I'll be the first to admit that I love the instant gratification of doing the work. Yeah. Right. But when it comes to the business side of things, I think people have to be patient and realize that the instant gratification of doing the work and seeing the results and seeing the shine, it's its the money end of it you have to be patient for in yeah. the sense that you're trying to build that relationship. Um, I had this conversation the other day with somebody about how I don't really – Um, I watch a lot of different people on Instagram from different industries that I feel have mastered the, what I would consider the maintenance client, Mm -hmm. right? Like barbers, lawn care people, people who have that steady repeat income, but yet they've built that. Um, And I think the detailing industry has a lot to learn from those other industries because we need to be patient in the sense that like you just said, that one person with the three hundred dollar package could be, you know, thirty thousand dollars down the road. Yeah, and the perfect example, like, like I, like I tell um, detailers, right, that come in, it's like, like I don't even like Chick Fil A, right? I hate Chick Fil A, <laughs> but I like how they treat me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? If I want French fries, you know, and my wife wants to go to Chick Fil A, I'm like, all right, yeah, let's go. You know, it's a good experience. They're always like super happy and, you know, you feel good when you leave. Yeah. Fri- I mean, their fries are, they're okay, you know, but I, I, we choose that a lot because of the customer service. Yeah. Right. We learn a lot from those places and in and out the same. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a perfect example, you know, cause you, for the most part, yeah, uh-huh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Even with Starbucks, same thing, you know, I mean, their coffees are great, obviously, but most of the time, you know, at least the one locally, they're, Great customer service. You know, sometimes I go and the guy's like, hey, Victor, are you going to get the the grilled cheese sandwich again today? I'm like, how do you remember that? You know, yeah. and it's like it felt like like it felt like a different experience, you know. So like, yeah, give me one, I guess. I don't even want it. But, you know, I want to spend my money now, you know. Well, yeah, because now he's more your friend, too. Exactly. You, yeah. you feel seen. You feel heard. You feel remembered. Yeah. That goes a long way, dude. It does, you know? Yeah. So it goes back to, like, detailing in any other industry. Like, you have to make your customers feel welcome, you know? Yeah, and, and they'll, they'll shout at the top of the mountain, Victor shops the best, or don't go there. I had a terrible experience, one or yeah. the other. Right. Yeah. 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 100%. yeah. So, But also it, on that note, for detailers, if you're super cheap, like I started out in 1990, super cheap. And then all those super cheap people told all their super cheap friends. So beware of that too. And then you're a cheap detailer. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 Back in the nineties. That's like when we were doing wash and waxes for 75 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Times. <laughs> Did a lot of those. Wait, I charge yeah. that. What's that? I charge that now. <laughs> oh, really? No. You charge that now? We gotta no, talk. I'm kidding, it's a joke. We gotta talk. <laughs> we gotta talk. Uh. <laughs> yeah, when I started, I think um, in like 2016, I was charging like I don't know, 25 bucks a car wash, 30 bucks maybe. Yeah. You know, and I, yeah. I thought I would make it a killer. You know. We all start somewhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then once you start paying insurance and payroll taxes, and all. you realize you're charging too cheap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So perfect, perfect example. I mean, perfect example. Like we had our washes, you know, for our maintenance customers, you know, we had them at sixty dollars. You know, Re- recently last year for 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 years, but you know, th- those customers were so loyal. You know, like it was a ha- a handful of them, but and it's like I had to raise them. You know, and I just recently two months ago, I I, I sent a text message. I like, hey, you know what? You know, due to the cost of living and everything chemical increases our prices are going to be such and such and you know we had a couple maybe two three customers were like oh just uh cancel my appointment for next week that's too much yeah and i sent a message like hey when you have a minute um can i call you you know and she was like yeah give me a call so i I called her you know we had a 15 minute conversation you know and i told her i go hey do you mind if i just kind of explain to you why we we bumped the price up and she's like yeah sure you know I broke everything down, man. My hourly rates, my chemicals, my water, 
my travel time, um, everything. And I was making $8 on every wash, you know, and I pay almost $4,000 here at the shop, you know. So I explained to her, this is the reason we're moving up. But we're also going to include, you know, a quick detail spray at the end of every wash to maintain it. Um, and she was like, you know what? I totally understand. All right. Schedule me for two weeks, you know. That's but awesome. Just explaining and educating customers on why we do stuff like that, you know. Yeah. I could have been a, a, you know, I could have just been a jerk and been like, hey, well, we're not going to wash car no more. But that's not us, right? Right. So all three customers or two, two or three customers that we ended up having that conversation with, they all stayed on board, you know. They understood where we're coming from. Um, I also explained to them, you know, it's been three years since I even changed my, uh, raised my prices, you know. Um, but once they understood why we're doing it, they they still want to support my business, right? Yeah. So you went back to relationships and let's exactly have a real talk about it instead of just a text. Yeah. A text. Yeah. I mean, I get texting them, but that was good that you called them. Yeah. Yeah. I had. You know, we always have. There's always problems. Uh oh, we lost Paul. That's okay. He might come back. <laughs> um. So, uh, but the thing that the thing is is that uh, how how many people do you think don't do that? How many how many people do you think don't reach out to have that conversation with their customers? I think a lot. To be honest, Brian, I I think a lot of people. Especially with like small services like that, like a maintenance wash, I I think, and this is just just my opinion, right? I think a lot of people are kind of like, hey, well, screw it, you know, it's seventy five dollars, like I can make more somewhere else, right? right? But then when those times come, you know, where it gets slow, it slows down, rainy season or or you know Christmas time, you wish you had those customers, right? Right. Um, and then also too, like a year from now, you know, that customer is going to want to get a ceramic coating, want to get paint protection film. And you kind of just let the customer walk away without having the chance of keeping them on board, you know? Right. Um, but I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I think a lot of people wouldn't have that conversation. I, and, and I think a lot of people don't realize that, uh, the investment to keep that customer down the road. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I, man, I, I'll tell you, there's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, a lot that, you know, a lot of things that I don't think people realize um, about, you know, things that you should be doing to build those relationships. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so. The way I see it, like it's it's uh, my customers all are they're always marketing for my business. Sure. You know? Um, I get random phone calls where like, hey, um, such and such, you know, said you were the place to go, and it's like, wow, like it 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 always makes me so happy to hear that a previous customer referred somebody, you know, right. because I have customers that like. They'll brag like crazy, like, oh, this is the guy to go to, do this, do this, tell him about this, and make sure you tell him I sent you. And it's like, dude, that, that makes me so happy, you know? Yeah. Everything, yeah. Everything's paying off, you know? Like, the relationship that we've created, like, the trust, you know? Trust is, I think, one of the hardest things to to uh, to uh gain from a customer. Right. right. Months, years, you know, to gain that trust. But once once they get, once you gain their trust, they're they're your customer for life. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't ruin it, you know? Victor, give me just one real quick second, okay? I'm going to pause the video okay. so we can try to get Paul back. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hang on a second. Don't go black on us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We lost Paul. Paul went out to uh, get something to eat or something. We, we don't know what's going on. I went to Chick-fil-A, man. They're He's back. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. But anyway, we were talking about... Um, we were talking about Victor making a phone call to a customer that he was going to lose because he raised his prices. And um, so how did that all end up in the sense that, I mean, your customers decided to, to reschedule. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the thing that and you and I kind of talked a little bit about off camera too, is that um, people, detailers, I don't think they realize the investment that they've put into someone that they need to continue 
to try to save that investment. It, it customers are an investment. Yeah. You know, so trying to keep customers, it, what, what do they say? What's the, I can't think of the old saying, Paul, something about, you know, it costs you so much money to keep a customer versus trying to find a new one. You know, it's a lot more expensive to try to find a new customer than keep an old one. So, um, I don't know the phrase, but yeah, it makes sense. But on the other side, um, you know, that all comes with making sure that you want to keep the customer, that they're a great person and that they will pay sure. and all that stuff. There's so many factors. Right. Um, Cause sometimes I'll raise my price. If I don't want to work for someone, I call it an a-hole price. <laughs> I'll do it one and a half or two times. If someone comes in and then if they pay me, I'm like, okay, I can deal with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but I think, you know, I think Paul had told me one time and I'm almost sure it was Paul. We were having a conversation about, about something with customers. And Paul says, well, dude, like you have to interview your customers as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So fortunately for me, I've been doing this for years and it's just like mindset, right? We're always talking about mindset, Brian. Yeah. I have people come here. I 100% make people bring me their vehicle. Uh, let's say 99%. So I can meet them because meeting the person and putting my, uh, shaking their hand and seeing in their eyes and me getting to know them is the most crucial part of what I do. Plus, if someone's going to come to my shop, now I know they're really interested. They're not just shopping around for price, right, Victor? Yeah, 100%. At least in my time. And so I told Victor, I've been doing this for years. I'm interviewing that person as much as they're interviewing me. If I want to work for them, like I said, I have an a-hole price just to get rid of people. That's a total a-hole. I won't deal with them. Right. I don't have to deal with them. You know, my shop's just like, it's my dream come true every day. And it's just my cool vibe over here. And I don't need no freaking bad energy. You know? <laughs> and ever, ever since you told me that, I, I've always went back to that. Like, do I want to do the work for this customer? Like, we have customers that, like, perfect example, about maybe a month ago, you know, he walked into my shop and right away he just walked in really aggressive, you know, and older guy. Yeah. And he was like, Who, yeah. who's the boss here? And I said, how, how can I help you? Like, what's your question, you know? Yeah. Well, I want to speak to the, the main person. And then I'm like, in regard to a detail? Or I never told him I was an owner. Right. Um, and I was like, let me help you out, you know? So he had his wife with them. You know, they were, they were going for a walk. And, you know, I kept being professional with him. Even though I wanted to tell him, like, get the hell out of my shop, you know? Yeah. I didn't. And then slowly started breaking him down, you know? How's your day going? Oh, good. Well, I just, my car's all messed up, just in this. And I was like, well, let's take a look at it, you know? Um, so he said, okay, I'll bring it right now. He brought it over, went over all the packages, told him, you know what, first time customer, I'm going to give you 10% off. We have this promotion on the out for the rest of the week due to the, the rain. And 100% changed the way, his changed. Whole different person when he dropped his car off the, for, for the day of service. Came back, very appreciative. And his wife pulled me aside when they picked up the car. And she's like, thank you for not being a jerk back. You know, not in front of him. He was already driving off. And I was like, that's nah, okay. You know, we deal with a lot of people every day. And then she's like, yeah. I like that, you know, but um, once he's your customer, he's your customer. And I was like, all right, yeah. cool. You know, nice. That was a perfect example. It's like, do I want to do the work for this guy? Or should I just double my price and, you know, tell him to get the hell out of here? But no, we didn't, you know, and he hasn't came back since then, but he left happy, you know. Well, and you know, the thing is, is that I, maybe he went somewhere else before he got to you and had a super bad experience. And he just thought that all detailers were that way. Could be. Yeah. I'm sure it happened. You know? Yeah. Or, and then again, like Paul and I've talked about that, like not everybody is going to be your customer. Yeah. They just aren't. And that's you know? okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You yeah, have to. Cool. Good for you with your people skills because like every day I try to go anytime I'm around anybody to, to just, you know, be present in myself. Where can I learn? What can I do better? How can I change this person's life? So when I say a whole price, it's just a guy like, I'll give you an example. 
Guy brought in his X7. This is at my old shop two years ago. Brand new car. That's what, at 200? M series, like 200 grand. And uh, he wanted just a one step in a coating. I told him 1500 bucks. And dude, he threw up his arms and he goes, 1500 bucks. I could go blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, go there. And I turned my back and I went in my shop and shut the door. <laughs> so those are the type of people I'm like, okay, bye. What do you yeah. want from me? You want me to beg? Okay, let me just do it for free because you're so cool. Yeah. No. But I no. do like dealing with people. I have a 22, no, 23 year customer that yelled at me. This was actually the pivotal point in my life as far as taking my power back, if you will, and knowing my worth. Um, he yelled at me and then we got into it and um, I started yelling at him. I don't yell a lot, but if he's yelling, I need to, I just matched his person. His energy. Yeah. And I said, I would never treat you this way. And if we move forward, you will never treat me like that again. I treat you with respect. You treat me with respect or you can kiss right. my butt. And I walked out 23 year customer. Wow. Wow. That's tough. And he can be yelling at his employees. As soon as our eyes meet, I see a little flit flinch in his eyes and he's like, Hey, what's up? And then, <laughs> so he's a, no. now a good friend and, um, it's just knowing your worth. Okay. It comes back to knowing your worth as a human being, right? Yeah. Um, not in a like, Oh, I'm all that. Yeah. Look at my shop. Look at my Instagram, dude. You guys all suck. No, you know, I know my worth. I love myself. I love my peeps, my customers. I love you guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I roll. And that's just such a big part of being, human yeah and caring and helping so and, and realizing that you know what you have to uh, not what you have to offer as far as a detailer is concerned but what you have to offer as a person is being able to to see and recognize that there might be a little bit more that has to go into it right and it's that whole you know that customer that customer experience, that customer relations, you're, you're trying to do your best to build a relationship with somebody. And if they're not going to let you, you have to know when to let go. Yeah. So yeah. Like a bad relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well, Victor, also, what, uh, what's since, since we did episode 44 almost a year ago, how much growth have you had? A lot. Um, I don't think I was doing pain protection film. You said it's been almost a year. Yeah, you were. Now you are. You're in March. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Um, and because of you, I am. Yeah, I, you know, every everyone, like I said, it's going, now we're talking about money wise, right? Um, we we were we were doing good, you know, back then a year ago. We were staying busy, making you know, hitting our number every week, every month. Um, I think I just got a little too comfortable there, right? So then, um. It's like I said, it's not, it's, I don't just see like myself growing. I want my guys to grow with, with us, with me. Um, so I'm always trying to think of ways like, well, what can I do different to have them make more money? You know, um, so I started paint protection film, you know, I, I called a manufacturer, Estec, and, you know, I had a conversation with them and, you know, people have always told me like, oh, well, that's gonna, that's financially like a game changer, right? Doing paint protection film bigger ticket jobs. Um, and I've always wanted to learn it. And that was actually my goal last year um, was to get into PPM. I didn't think I was going to be where I'm at now with it, but just to at least to be able to do like deep pillars, headlines, stuff like that. Right. So I ended up flying to Washington and took the ESTEC class. And ever since then, it's just been game changer. Game changer. Right. I mean, Paul, 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 no, I see Paul smiling already. He knows. Yeah, because of you, I'm doing it finally, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to push Paul, like, dude, just do it, bro. Trust me, just do it. You have the shop, you have the, you know, the clientele. Yeah, you know, you're the right guy, and thankfully he did it. You know, he yeah. off a couple months. Thanks ago. for that, by the way. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I found this 
this really good website company, which Paul already knew about. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I did that too because of you. Thank you very much. You tell us roadmap, you know, Amazing. they find so much business uh, to my business. Yeah. Um, with a professional website, you know, the form, just all the, all the, you know, the context they put in there is just great. You know, we get at least maybe at least two customers requesting quotes from that, you know, every day where they have to like spend, you know, three to five minutes to fill everything out um, in order to be able to, to, to submit that form. And those customers, I would say eight out of 10 or seven out of 10 are, are, they know what they want. They're ready to schedule and they're serious. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, um, nice. yeah that was a pretty big investment on that website, but it, it, thankfully it worked out great. Um, Chris with Detailer Roadmap has been super communicative. Um, communication is great. Yeah. Just great people all around. And Paul, Paul can vouch, you know. That's so awesome. like I talk about, I think Brian and I talked about, I think it was Scott last time. Um, well, Scott so, with uh, Detail Division? Yeah. So surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Scott's yeah. my blood, right? You know him. He's just rad. And the guys at S Tech when I was there too. Just everybody's so freaking cool and they want the best for you. Yeah. Same thing at Modesta with John. Yep. You're Modesta too. Yep. Um, detail, man, dude. Only thing I don't have that you have is uh, you're selling yeah. site supply. <laughs> yeah. And you have tin. I don't have tin yet. <laughs> okay, cool. I, I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> and we then we wrap my wife's Jeep, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, surrounding myself with killer vendors, um, Adams polishes Anaheim is a stone's throw for me. Those guys are the best. Mm -hmm. um, just adds to the the greatness of what we do. I think I don't know if greatness is a word, but it just makes every little step of what we do just that much better. You know what I mean? Well, just like with Manessa, right? Um, I reached out to you and I'm like, dude, Springer, like, how good is that stuff? You know and and, and Paul told me, like, dude, this stuff's really good, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, how can I get in contact, you know, with them to see if I can become an installer? You know, I did all my research, and I think that that's a good fit for us. And I think I messaged uh, – I think I filled out the form, and no one ever reached, reached out. And Paul actually put me in contact, you know, with John. Yeah. Okay, here's yeah. his Instagram, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I sent him a message, you know, um, and he responded. You know, we jumped on, like, a, I don't know, 20, 30-minute conversation with John. You know, he's asking me why I wanted to become, you know, an authorized installer from them and all my his my, you know, my history. And it worked out perfect. That's like the perfect company. You know, I feel like yep. we fit, you know, uh, right in with them. Uh, but yep. thanks to Paul, you know. Yeah. Well, that's just goes to show, like, we don't, we don't compete. I don't really, yeah. I don't compete with anybody, even locally around here. I don't follow a bunch of people around here i don't know every shop around here i don't focus on you know oh there's all these shops and these guys are doing this i to be honest don't follow many people yeah because i want to stay in my lane and just do my thing yeah not yeah. you know i don't want to compare myself to everybody um but i got local guys around here i give work away all the time to people and vice versa you know just like you and me we've done that together dude it's killer yeah. Or a guy lived right down the street from you, and he's like, <clears throat> "Like, wait, where did you live? I live in Glendora. I'm like, dude, don't drive all the way over here. Just go yeah, to the well, yeah. right there. Paul referred you, you know? Yeah. He's, and he had, you guys became buds, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, same thing was like that, that Tesla Model Plaid the, was a, the full body PPF, you know? That customer called me first, then called Paul, and then we talked, and we're like, hey, same customer, you know? Yeah. yeah. I told Paul, like, hey, Paul, this is what I quoted that customer at. And Paul's like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to quarter cheaper than that. So Paul, Paul even said, he's like, I'm going to go actually go higher um, so you can get the job. Yep. And How you got would do that? Who would do that? Well, Paul. that's why we're, that's why we're successful. Yeah. Because when you, can, when you compete and you have that bad energy and you're all about yourself, nothing yeah. works out. Yeah. But that, that, Eventually that's it's it. all going to fall down. You know, you can have the car and this and that, but. And we're not talking about a, a two thousand dollar job. This was like a six thousand five hundred dollar job, you know. Wow. That Paul Paul gave to me, you know. Paul well, could have you went under. You, you know, earned it. I told him eight grand just so you get it, though. Yeah. Because I you wanted. Yes, yeah, uh, he actually ended up adding all kinds of stuff, but it it was like a set, like close to eight thousand dollar job, you know. 
when it was all done and said. Yeah, by the time you do everything. Yeah, the tint and everything, and yeah. But wow. that's why we are friends, you know. Stuff that's like that. for it, man. You got wife and kids too. I'm plenty busy. I yeah. Don't, I try not to really think about numbers too much, you know. I mean, I have to, but I don't. Um, I don't know. Everything's just chill all the time, dude. Uh, so, yeah. with, and with what you just said, you have to think about the numbers, but. You're more, I think both of you guys are more focused on the customer relationship. Yeah. Well, I, like I've said before, I try to, right now is all I have. Right this moment is all any of us have. The past is in our minds. The future is in our minds, really. Right. right? Okay. Now we got to think about it and plan, learn from the past, plan for the future, all that stuff. But right now, us three are together. And it's right now, and we're just talking. And yeah. that's what I try to live my life every day. And it just seems to be such a much better mindset. And I'm just present. I try to be present most of the time. And like I've said, Brian, that really, I don't have a lot of <clears throat> thoughts that just keep going and going. You and I have talked about it a million times. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen really at, uh, at all anymore. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, Victor, what for Victor, when you said that there was a form that people had to fill out that it'd take three to five minutes to fill it out. Mm -hmm. When you get that form, I'm I'm completely off the rails right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm going back to when someone fills out that form for you, when you get that form, do you then reach out and make a personal connection with them? I do. So it actually asks on there what their preferred um method of contact is. So it could be, uh, what is it called? Call, text, or email? Yeah. And if I always respect what they put. So okay. if it's email, I will call them. I'll send them an email. Um, I'll give them a ballpark. You will obviously go with the low end to the high end. Um, and then um, they'll usually respond back. And I, I, when I ask, hey, do you mind if I jump on a, on a phone call with you? And I already have their phone number. Yeah. Um, they put it on there. And... Most of the time, I try to have them come here with the car, like Paul, like Paul, because right. having a conversation with somebody is completely different from having somebody right in front of you and, and, and talking to them. Um, I just feel like there's more of a connection and you can read them. They can read you and they can see what type of person you are, yep. uh, see your business, see the, you know, the location. And it, I think it just makes them feel more comfortable. And most of the time they end up scheduling, you know. Yep. Not every job, but I would say it's it's a high conversion rate. Nice. Plus the okay. the golden phrase is, "Oh, my car's small and it's been in the garage for seven years and it's not that bad." <laughs> uh, now, we're, um, one of my uh, employees, Jerry, he actually wants to come out with a shirt that says uh, "Not too bad," or it's <laughs> not too bad on the back, and it put the, our logo on there. Um, it's hilarious. We hear it all the time. You know, yeah, it's not that bad. Any, not that any, bad. A quick buff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it'd be, yeah. but these are the customers that really, you know, it's not their fault. They're just not educated on detailing, you know? People right. don't see what we see. That's our yeah. duty to get them to see what they hopefully yeah, will. It's like I'm not educated in accounting, you know, or, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's so, it's, you know, we don't make fun of them or nothing, but it's just like, it's funny when we hear it, like, yeah. or just a quick buff, because to us, it's like, what the hell is that, you know? But once they come in and we show them, like we'll do a test spot, you know, here's a one, here's a one step, there's a two step, there's a three step. Um, which one do you like? You know, and I always tell before we do the, the panel, we tell them like, look, we're, we'll do the test pieces so you can see, but you're gonna have this permanent on your car. So when you drive around and the sun hits that, you're gonna see the three different finishes, yep. you know, and if they're okay with it, then I kind of know, like, okay, they're gonna get one, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do it, and then they'll see all of them. We'll, we'll give them the light, you know, inside our shop to look at everything, explain what's doing what, um, and they'll pick one, you know. Put the price on each square. This is this, this is this, this is this. Yeah. Then they'll go with that one, you know. So right. funny that you mentioned that. Somebody posted, it was a black car, probably 10 years old, scratch. Uh, they did a tape line and, like, did a full quarter of the hood as a test spot. Yeah. Uh, and the guy just, just they told him that same thing and he's like, nah, I'm gonna take off. And so now he's got that perfect yeah. quarter part of the hood. 
finishes. You know, <laughs> everybody. Like, yeah. Everybody has the, a different opinion about their own personal dirt. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's just all about communicating, and yeah. you know, tell all these so, young guys like, you know what? Go out, and make mistakes. Yeah. If you're afraid yeah. of making mistakes, I mean. I had a guy call me the other day. We do wheels off a ton, right? And he's like, I'm looking. For, he goes, do you do wheels off? I said, yeah. He's, he's like, I got an SS Camaro. You're the 30th shop I've called. Oh, wow. I said, what? He goes, I've called 30 shops and nobody does it. And the last shop I called, they gave me your phone number. I'm like, 30? He goes, yeah. I'm like, well, probably done 30 this year already. So bring it huh. in. Wow. But my point being is, you know, we lift these cars and it's like, I get a little, some of these show cars, I'm like, I don't get into the fear brain because, man, I wouldn't even lift that freaking thing. How many times have I called you, Paul? Hey, Paul, do I have it correct? Or the, or the jack? Always call me, dude, because I don't want anything falling on anybody. I'll FaceTime Paul, like, hey, dude, like, I have a question before I lift this car. Yeah. Is it is it good? And he's like, yeah, dude. Well, Facetime, you know, and then I feel comfortable, you know, picking up the car. Nice. And yeah, I mean, because you gotta have guts to be self. Yeah, I have guts to do many things in life, but I mean, yeah. you gotta have guts to be self-employed, lift car. And, and another thing, you know, it's it's off a little bit off, not really off topic, but you know, we had a boat in here not too long ago. I think Paul, you remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna name what polishers any of that. That's a whole different thing, but. We were using this polisher, you know, a three-inch polisher, and this was a custom-painted boat, right? One of my guys came in early that day at 6.30 to start it, and he was he was doing a test spot. You know, it was a, like a candy, uh, a candy finish paint, right? And the boat was from, like, 1994. Um, so the polisher ended up, the tip ended up breaking. The metal piece dug right into the, into the boat. Uh. And took a good maybe eighth of an inch deep into the boat right and right away the first thing that came into my head like well can what can we do can we fix it like you know i didn't call the customer yet or nothing they didn't freak out so i called my buddy at the paint shop and i was like hey oscar what can you do for me this is what i have going on he uh he looked at it through the pictures and he's like dude that's gonna that's gonna run you like ten thousand dollars to repair and i don't i can't even do it he said you have to go yeah. see the paint low riders and all this you know so at that point, I knew there were there was nothing we could do about it, right? Um, called the customer, and I was like, "Hey, man, I, I got some bad news, you know." And he was like, "What's going on?" You know, first time customer too. And I was like, "We were polishing, you know, accident happened. It's never happened, you know. This polisher broke, the piece of metal dug in, and I sent him a picture of it. And then he was like, "Well, can it be fixed?" And I was like, "You know what? It I can't find anyone that can touch this up." And then um, I go, I apologize. I, I'm not going to charge you for the detail. Um, this was a full paint correction, you know, and I was like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the highest package we have, three-step correction, ceramic coating, and I'm just not going to pay you for it. You know, I mean, I'm not going to charge you for it. And he was like, well, that's the thirty-five, the no, $3,800 package? And I said, yeah. And he's like, okay. He goes, uh, I think that's fair, you know. He's like, uh, I'm going to sell the boat anyways, you know, so – it's really not that noticeable. He says, don't worry about it. He wow. says, just do what you can, you know? And, oh, man, that took a huge load off me. Yeah. Instead of doing some sneaky stuff and try to touch it up and doing some, you know, it was just, it goes back to the honesty, you know? And right. he came, he's like, hey, I got more cars that I'm going to bring to you. Um, he's like, I appreciate you being honest, you know? Yeah. Um, but goes back to what we were talking about, honesty, you know, relationships yeah. and all that. It always, always is the best route. Yeah. I want to tell you a story of stuff like that because I got some. <laughs> it <feel> better. <laughs> we got two minutes. No, I'm just Okay. Kidding. The first car we lifted was a BMW X3 in my old shop. Okay. All wheel drive. And we didn't mark the tires. We used to do two wheels at a time. Put the front tire on the front wheel stand, the rear tire on the rear wheel stand. That's how I did the first car. My customer, I let my customer rush me, and I put the rear on the front, the front on the rear on the driver's side. Oh. <sighs> first car I ever lifted and took the wheels off. Crunch, 
noises. Oh. Call my customer. Brand new car from this dealer straight to my shop. Had to go right back to the dealer. Um, I think that was like a $3,500 job we did. I didn't charge him. And I think his, I think the dealer charge was right about the same. So I had to eat it. Mm. And so that's what I mean about having guts to do it again. But it got me to take a little $2 crayon and mark the tires now. Yeah. And we're super careful. I mean, stuff happens, but I was honest with my customer. Just the other day, we did a Porsche, a white Cayenne. You guys probably saw it in here. We did everything. And the, the front grill had water spots. And one of my guys went a little too heavy, dude, and just destroyed one of the fins of the grill. I'm like, oh, my God. So I text my customer a picture. I said, we totally effed it up. I'll do whatever it takes because it's like the fifth car we've done, sixth car we've done for him. Yeah. And I said, whatever you want to do, we'll do. I mean, with that car, they got to take the whole front end. That was at Porsche. Probably would have been 10 grand, I bet. Wow. So I said, we're going to wrap it in black because Jesus is here now. I had black. And you just look at it. You tell me what you want to do. So he came in. He didn't even see it. He couldn't find where we did it. <clears throat> but I pointed it out. And uh, I think it cost me 1500 bucks because I told him, you just pay me whatever's fair because you're being super cool. Yeah. And it cost me 1500 bucks, But that's the sixth car we've done for him. And he looked yeah. me in the eye, shook my hand. He goes, dude, I just can't make you enough for being honest. And he'll still come back. Yeah. He'll always come back. And I always say, well, not only do I need to be honest for myself, but you know, my kids are watching me every day too. Yeah. So I, I have my share of mistakes. Um, just got to cough them up and be honest about it. It always works out. That's what I mean. I try not to, if I freak about, if you freak out about the numbers, that job costs 3,800 bucks. That's a stinger, but you did the right thing. I just think the universe is going to bless you for doing that. You know, if you tried to hide it and didn't tell them, think of the nightmare that would bring to your shop and your family and stuff. Yeah, it was local. Just I, I don't, I don't need that bad name. You know, I don't, I don't need people speaking bad about my my business. Well, if you're like me, I like to lay my head down at night and sleep, and not have that on my mind because that would eat me up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, Victor, before we get out of here, what do you, what else do you want to tell anybody? What, what else do you want to Let's, share? I want to hear another horror story. Another horror story? <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I think it just, you know, go, going out to everybody, not just detailers, but mainly the detail industry. Uh, I know a lot of people are freaking out right now. You know, it, it, it has gotten slow. Um, thankfully, we still have work. You know, my guys are still employed. Right. Uh, we're nowhere near, you know, we're, we're panicking, but. Has the rain hurt you recently? It has. Yeah. It has. Um, thankfully, we still have work. You know, last week we ended up shutting down for I think two days because it was just coming down hard. My guys yeah. messaged me like one drives a motorcycle, so he's like, "Hey, can I stay home?" And like, absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. other one said, uh, "Hey, can I just take those days off?" Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. I still stay here and open up the retail store, but um, my guys like to work. You know, they like to work. You know, six days a week. Uh, mm -hmm. I can work certain holidays, you know, like um, today, for example, I think it's, was it Martin Luther King? I think. Today, I think it's the day after Super Bowl, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, um, Recovery day. <laughs> yeah. Recovery. I don't know, my, my kids didn't go to school. I don't know what it is today, but something. But um, <laughs> what was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, you just have to, you have to stay positive, you know, like, you know, we go through this every year. You know, yeah, yeah. And maybe you, you take something from this and learn like, hey, maybe you got to save a little more money. Maybe you got to stop, you know, going out as much during summer and, you know, pocket a little bit of extra cash to get through the winter time. Um, but I always take it as a learning experience. You know, um, Save some money, you know, uh, right. it is going to get better. Paul, you know, in February. March. Hey, on that note, the, this 
So, Brian, I know it's funny. We're like, oh, winter. I mean, come on. You're in Ohio, dude. <laughs> but what we mean about that is we've been getting buckets. And so it, last year, it like when it says it's going to rain, Brian, it dumps for yeah. days and days. This year is the same thing. It's so what happens, especially when you're mobile, right now, today, I had to put sunblock on because it was sunblock. Warm so it's just let you, it's 34 degrees here right now so well so awesome. the rainy days are real this year and last year and you know for the last 10 years we've been in a drought so no yeah. detailer in socal knows anything about real rain you get a rainy day here or there a little bit here and there nothing yeah now we got real storms that's crazy so what victor's saying is you have to be prepared for that you know, yeah. you're cranking in the summer, in the spring, in the fall. You go buy, go out and buy a fat car with a fat car payment. Well, guess what? You might have a couple of weeks off in the rain. Are you yeah. ready? Yeah. So that's that's yeah. what he's saying. Fortunately for me, when I see that rain coming, I get on the phone, just pack my shop, and then I just shut the doors and be like, "Wow, let it come, dude. It's let freaking it awesome." <laughs> yeah, I just booked a motorhome for next week, Victor. If you get slow, I need your help. Oh, nice. How, how many feet? 40? No, it's a double rear axle. It's probably 45, 50. We're gonna, we'll, we'll be stuck on these cars for the next four days. All right, black, good. good. Black truck and the black Mercedes. Good for nice. you. Guys. We have yeah. a couple of cool nice. details coming in tomorrow or Wednesday. Yeah, so just keep yourself booked. You got a shot. I keep my guys booked. Next week, we're going to get rain. Yeah, it it just sucks to see some of these guys, you know, like they 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 get slow and right away it's like they're gonna sell their van, they're gonna sell this. It's like you gotta. Well, prepared. it's all learning experience and yeah, this yeah. is being like I said, being self-employed. If they want to hear the reality, you got to learn how to manage money. You got to make it and bank it. Don't spend it. Right. Nope. Yeah. If you spend it, you know. But yeah, that's all the thing. For everybody to stay motivated. Don't give up. You know, if if it was easy, like they say, everybody would do it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Victor, tell everybody where they can find you. Glendora. So our address is four four five East Route sixty six, Glendora, California. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at detail underscore boys with the Z underscore LLC. Okay. Um, and yeah, yeah. Come on by. Perfect. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for being here tonight. Appreciate the conversation. A um, lot of good information. I think uh, you've shared some great information. I think I, it's just always good to talk to you. Good to talk to Paul. You guys got so much knowledge. Um, but uh, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, thanks okay? for having us, Brian. So, yeah, no worries. Paul, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank good you, bud. Uh, you. Victor, congrats on all your success. Brian, thanks for having me on all the time. You're no nice. worries. We appreciate it. Hey, you guys, uh, just continue to share the shine, and we are going to get out of here. Guys, hang out for a little bit. We'll talk. And right. uh, we will uh, – and by the way, don't forget, this is going to be on YouTube. Um, don't have a date yet because I've got I'm, – I'm scheduled out to like the end uh, – first couple weeks of March already. So we, we're going to try to put everything out on YouTube now um, as long as Paul doesn't mind and Victor doesn't mind. I and, love it. Uh, so, but uh, guys, listen, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And we'll do it again. You guys have a great night. Thanks, All right. Guys. See ya. All right.